And in this video, I'll try to go over a few things. Uh, not to be confusing, but when you cross guppies or when you keep uh, guppy lines that are uh, pretty much heavily crossed, like the ones from Asia where we really don't know what's in the background, uh, you can end up uh, with some issues down the line. Now, the, the ones I'm showing you right now, these look like uh, really nice double sword red something males. And just to explain, I had bought uh, metalhead red snakeskin, uh, Russian lace snakeskins from a seller in Thailand about seven years ago. And I didn't know what he used to make them. And I didn't have anything to cross into them. So uh, like a good uh, guppy nerd, I took some of them and I made crosses into other lines, which actually kept the line going. And the ones that I let just interbreed, uh, not colony breed, but uh, just go sister to brother down the line over about seven years. Uh, this is what I ended up with. And I ended up with only five babies that were usable. The other ones couldn't swim right. And this is what they grew out to be. So just five males that looked nothing whatsoever uh, like the fish I bought. So it could be uh, something kind of referred to in a guppy hobby as a death gene where eventually you get fish that are so inbred or the genes are so screwed up you end up with non-viable uh, babies that may be uh, crawlers on the bottom or they may uh, give you something like this, all males. And what do you do from there? Now you can see there's quite a bit of genetics actually in this. It's got a nice iridescent shine. I can see a little bit of like a Japan blue in the uh, lateral line, which is the part that looks blue. And there's obviously reds. Uh, they have a clear dorsal, very odd. Uh, so that brings us to what I'm gonna do as an experiment, which I've been working on. It's I'm about three months into it. These larger females, three of them, I actually bought from Petco for like, I don't know, 250 a piece. Uh, two of them are half blacks. Uh, one has this nice shark type uh, tail. And they've already had uh, three batches of babies in them in a tank. So I'm gonna uh, take the ones I like the most males and go back to the mothers and then uh, also to the uh, sisters. So you can see, uh, some of these are what stores are calling red mosaic dumbo ears. They're not even remotely the real thing. What they are is half blacks with an AOC, any other color pattern in the tail. The dorsal doesn't match. What actually they refer to as big ear or dumbos is not that at all. They're just black uh, peck fins, which are on every single half black fish you'll ever find. But now this male is very interesting and I, you can probably figure I'm gonna use this male in the future uh, with these, uh, the, one of the mothers and some of the uh, sisters and see what I can get. Cause I've never seen anything like that. It may grow out to be super crappy looking, but it looks to me like a, a grayish, half black uh, multicolor AOC thing. So just uh, something I'll update once in a while. Uh, they're not staying in this tank. They're actually in part two of uh, my uh, outside guppy thing. They're gonna be inside, but they'll be in a five gallon bucket, which will have an air stone plants. And I change the water every, uh, about 50% every week. So it's, it's like just a fish tank you can't see into. But anyway, this male has some promise. Females are nice, and uh, this has been going on for three months. And uh, you can see the females are still alive. They don't have the bent backs yet. And uh, it's gonna be interesting. Now, when I mentioned uh, uh, the metal heads, Let's see if I can get down here without breaking my knee. This is uh, a line of metal heads that I'm working on. They have the swallow gene, as you saw in a prior video. And uh, you can see the metalhead uh, characteristic there. And 
yeah, these are pretty cool. I got these from a cross I made uh, a while back, which was uh, the half black blues and the, a, uh, a black lace snake skin that I came up with. Now, this one is starting to get the uh, reddish color in it. So, so I'm just going to continue to call them uh, red bluegrass metalheads. Uh, I do have one male right there that looks like it's going to be a metal head and a uh, long swallow fin thing. So he'll be rather useless, but cool to look at. And uh, there's some more of the females that have it. I really do like them. So anyhow, that's uh, what those sword tail looking things started out as from a line that I paid a lot of money for from Thailand. And then I ended up making a little, almost the same thing of the initial purchase by crossing some of my black lace snake skins and uh, a half black blue female. So uh, one other thing I want to try to go over, which may not be easy with one hand, and you should always use a uh, an old Star Wars calendar to uh, as a workbench area. Uh, this is actually. Uh, Michael from Michael's Boiled Fish Hut uh, without his makeup and his glasses and without a camera. Yeah, it looks just like him. Anyhow, I've uh, talked in the past and been asked questions about sponge filters. That's what I use in my tanks. I don't uh, use the, the uh, loose stars, which a lot of guppy breeders use. And I bought them. These are when you buy them. These I bought from Angels Plus. These are round ones. They give you the lift tube. And the uh, nice uh, foam that's on a slate base, which gives it weight. And then there's a hole that you can't see drilled in the top. So I figured, yeah, what the heck, maybe I'll make some of my own because I'm cheap sometimes. And I just wanted to try it. This was the, uh, the first attempt and it works well. I took it out of a tank. I, I just went to the fish store and got some uh, pieces of shale and slate. Picked the flattest ones that were close to four by four. And I bought the uh, large size AquaClear uh, replacement filter pads, which I don't even know if they call them AquaClears anymore. They might be something else. Cut it in half or thirds, use an X-Acto knife and made the uh, hole in the center. And then I uh, bought uh, 3 8 inch, uh, I guess the hard tubing. Cut a hole right there for the airline. And I cut these in like yeah, about five six inch lengths so this goes in the top the airline uh, goes right here and you get bubbles it uh, hits against the bottom here creates bubbles and you have biological filtration now, this probably cost me two dollars to make and these really nice sponge filters they're a little expensive now they might be eight bucks a piece maybe more so I tried another way and this is the end result of that. I went to Home Depot and I bought four by four inch uh, regular bath tiles, got better foam and used that. And these handle the water really well. These with the larger pores, you lift it out of the tank to uh, clean it and you end up with uh, most of the dirt going back in the tank. So these smaller pore ones are uh, much better at retaining the dirt until you can squish it out in a bucket of warm water. You always want to clean sponge filters either in the tank water you just changed or in the equivalent temperature of fresh water so you don't kill all the bacteria. You just want to get some of the dirt out of it. So the same concept. These are uh, half inch ones. They have some uh, fins, I guess, or slots. And that goes in like that. And there you go, that's two of them. Now you can buy smaller ones. These are maybe three by three. If you wanna make them for a five gallon tank. And these are the four by fours. They probably will cost you about 17 cents a piece. I just get the basic porcelain, which is safe for tanks. Now I did buy extra foam pieces from Steve and Angels Plus because they're pre-drilled. They're a really good foam and uh, I don't have to draw anything and I don't have to cut anything, so it's even better. So what you end up uh, wanting to do is you uh, get the uh, regular aquarium cement sealant 
and uh, try to make a uh, this is not going to be easy with one hand but that's what you want to do maybe put a little blob in the middle so since I did such a crappy job I'll just put some over here this stuff does stink so what you want to do is use it in a uh, well ventilated area definitely put the cap back on the uh, product and then all you have to do is take the bottom of the uh, the square foam thingamajig clean it off and voila you have now created a sponge filter so you can see it, uh, it fits just right even with my uh, clumsy one-handedness that's actually on there pretty good so this is a sponge filter that will be good for use uh, in uh, probably about two or three days I would let the uh, stuff dry it, it already is holding it so then you want to put some weight on it that's not going to be enough so probably put this on it keep that together uh, to get enough weight on it so that uh, it seals properly anyhow that's really all it is to building your own sponge filters there's really not much to it and by showing you the little uh, tiles you can make your own and uh, for like smaller filters like I could use this which is from an aqua clear I don't know what size uh, I'll check and I would just cut with a uh, exacto knife or something straight down the middle and do that or somewhere I have some more I thought they're an aqua clear 200 that's what they are you get three of them in a package now you could probably uh, use two of them to make a uh, this kind of, for a five and a half it looks like two will fit pretty good and uh, if you do it tight enough you might not have to cut down the middle you just uh, could probably uh, wrap it with something and just put the uh, stem right down the center but yeah that's kind of being really cheap but anyway this is all you have to do to make a sponge filter and uh, it's more adventures into being a uh, experimental uh, cheap uh, fish nerd uh, because I guess we all try to make our own stuff more or less or repurpose stuff so anyway I hope uh, this helped you a little bit and uh, check out that really cool prehistoric type uh, homemade filter that actually works so anyway thank you have fun enjoy your day